The European Union is about to build a wall, not of concrete, a wall of drones. Thousands of them, a $965 million drone wall designed to stop Russian aircraft, spy drones, and anything else Moscow tries to send west. And here's the wild part. Ukraine might be the secret engine making it happen. The EU calls it a defensive initiative, but make no mistake, this is the biggest shift in European military thinking since the Cold War. Hey friends, Wes here, Army and Air Force veteran, and today we're breaking down Europe's most ambitious defense project, a literal AI-powered wall of drones stretching from the Baltics to the Black Sea. If you're picturing Skynet meets the Maginot Line, you're not far off. Russia's drone campaign against Ukraine and its neighbors has become a chronic infection. Shahed's, Lancet's, Orlan's, you name it. They've wandered into Poland, Latvia, even Romania. So on September 26th, defense ministers from several European EU countries met to do something about it. Their solution was to combine jammers, radar, and interceptors across multiple nations to create one continuous defensive belt, what they're calling the drone wall. Here's what they actually agreed to and why it matters. First, they agreed the wall must start with detection, not hope. Satellites, national radars, and forward deployed electro-optical sensors will be linked across a shared picture so movement is visible before it reaches the border. This is the basic premise that NATO announced after the EU recently met. Build the detection backbone first, then layer responses on top of it. Second, the ministers signed up for cross-border data sharing in a common command node. Instead of 10 disconnected alert chains, they want a single interoperable network where a thermal blip over Kaliningrad becomes a vector, not a rumor. The point was repeated recently in AP reporting. Make detection actionable and fast, even if the detecting unit sits in another country. Third, they match sensors with non-kinetic tools. So this would be electronic warfare, jammers, spoofers, and directed RF systems. These will be deployed alongside radars so the wall can try to blind or misdirect incoming UAVs before spending a single missile. Defense news and industry briefings note that companies are already lining up to supply detection and jamming nodes to the project. That mix gives commanders options. Blind the drone, take its comms, or kinetic options if necessary. Fourth, about those kinetic options. Autonomous interceptors are part of the plan. Ministers talked about counter drones that are themselves drones or truck launched interceptors. Fast mobile launch points rather than static sites. So strikes can happen where the threat appears. The ministers framed this as layered defense, sensors, EW and interceptors. Reuters covered the EU promising a technical roadmap to tie that all together. Fifth, Ukraine is baked into the concept operationally and industrially. Brave Tech EU, the EU-Ukraine partnership to industrialize battlefield-proven tech, is the vehicle for buying and scaling Ukrainian designs inside of Europe. That was explicitly part of the commission's vision. Take what works in Ukraine, mass produce it in Europe, and shortcut procurement timelines. The EU's Brave Tech pages lay out that blueprint. Sixth, Funding and fast procurement were on the table. Ministers pointed to existing European Defense Fund projects and recent EDF rounds that prioritized unmanned systems and AI. The EDF has already directed roughly the size of the headline figure into dozens of projects. Ministers want to funnel that momentum into the wall and speed up delivery cycles. Multiple outlets reported the EDF support and the plan to prioritize battlefield proven systems. Seventh, mobility and deception were requirements. The ministers insisted launchers and command posts must be mobile and survivable. A truck hides, it pops up and launches, and then it rapidly relocates. If you leave a static battery in the woods, artillery is going to find it. So the wall's architecture favors mobility and concealment and short firing cycles to blunt counter battery effects. Analysts in defense news and think tank pieces emphasize that mobility was a central design choice. Eighth, rules of engagement and legal frameworks are being sorted now, not later. Autonomous interceptors raise legal and political questions. Who authorizes a shootdown? Which country's rules of engagement apply? How do you avoid escalation? 
Ministers tasked experts to draft a legal template so decisions can be made in minutes, not days. AP noted the urgency and the push to clarify these laws quickly. Finally, NATO involvement and interoperability were confirmed as priorities. Ministers want the wall to plug into NATO channels where appropriate, so data and taskings can flow to allied assets and not duplicate efforts. NATO has been invited into the conversation and allied staffs will test integration scenarios in upcoming exercises. And then some outlets have noted upcoming NATO discussions to test realism and burden sharing. The bottom line on this meeting about the drone wall is that the ministers didn't sign a fantasy wish list. They agreed in a practical sequence, build the sensor network, link data across borders, field mobile jammers and decoys, and stand up rapid intercept units. Human supervised, AI enabled, that can be launched from multiple nations. The goal is a tactical, resilient belt that raises the operational cost of probing Europe to a point where probing stops being worth it. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Ukraine's fingerprints are all over this. Ukraine brings the tech and the battlefield experience. Europe brings the funding and the manufacturing muscle. Together, they could create the most advanced aerial defense network on Earth. Let's walk through what that might look like in action. 0400 hours, fog over the Lithuanian border. A Russian armored column crosses from Kaliningrad. No warning, no declaration. 0413, NATO's new AI command node detects the thermal signatures first. Drones spin up, the wall wakes. 0422, HX2 drones launch from hidden trucks and bunkers across Lithuania and Poland. 0428, Russian jammers activate, flooding the air with noise, but the drones don't care. They're running on terrain maps and onboard AI, powered by NVIDIA Jetson and Orin boards. 0432. Contact. The HX-2s dive on the armored columns. A BTR erupts in flames. A Russian T-72 tank turret spins through the air like a hubcap from hell. Russian artillery retaliates, but the launchers have already moved. Fresh drones launch from Polish sites and hit command vehicles next. Russian momentum stalls. By 0500 hours, 30 Russian vehicles are destroyed. No NATO casualties. The airspace remains contested, but unbreached. That's deterrence in action. Autonomous, fast, and bloodless for our side. This isn't about building another Iron Curtain. It's really about changing the cost equation. Deploying thousands of human soldiers along NATO's eastern border would take years and provoke escalation. A drone wall, well, you can deploy it in months, and it costs a fraction of an armored brigade. Every Russian incursion now comes with a price tag in burning metal. That's how you stop an aggressor before the first soldier crosses the line. During the Cold War, NATO's strategy was simple slow down Soviet tanks long enough to bring in reinforcements. That playbook is useless now. We're not fighting columns of T-80s anymore. Russia doesn't have any left. We're denying access to battalion tactical groups, hypersonic missiles, and swarms of drones, all without crossing the nuclear line. The drone wall, it's really creating a moving zone of pain, a no-go zone where anything that enters dies. Gunbert Scherf at Helsinki isn't pitching science fiction. HX-2s are already flying in Ukraine. Satellites are already tracking Russian movements. AI-powered targeting is already taking out artillery batteries. The bones of the drone wall already exist. What's missing is scale, coordination, and a political will. Because the next war won't be fought trench to trench. It'll be fought bit to bite, drone to drone, and decided in the milliseconds between sensor and trigger. The only question left is this. Will NATO build the drone wall before it's needed or after it's too late? That's it for today, friends. Subscribing is the single best way to keep this channel healthy. So go ahead and hit that red button if you don't mind. And leave me a comment down in the comments letting me know if the drone wall is a huge waste of money or a great idea. Would Russia just find a way to bypass it if it wanted access to Europe? I want to know your thoughts. And as always, Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, Crimea is Ukraine.